In this video, we're going to talk about depreciation and um, how that fits into cash flow and the various methods of depreciation. So depreciation is both the recognition that assets that are purchased in one period will be used over multiple periods. So the idea is you want to spread those costs over the full life of an asset. That's different than something like rent because rent is paid in the period and it's used in that period. But something like a machine that you purchase is going to be purchased one time and then used over a long period of time. It also recognizes that that asset decreases in value over time. It depreciates. And the recognition of the calculation of the value of the asset over time is called book value. So we're going to start by looking at one of the most simple methods, which is straight-line depreciation. In straight-line depreciation, you, the depreciation in any one period is equal to the investment amount minus the salvage value divided by the number of years. So it's just straight, even depreciation over time. And the book value is then equal to that initial investment. The book value in any year J is equal to the initial investment minus all the depreciation up to period J. So depreciation of K through um, 1 through J. Um, so let's look at an example of that. So what is the depreciation each of three years of the life of a widget tester that costs $13,000 and has a salvage value of $4,000 and use straight line methods? So in this case, we take the depreciation in any year in J, which is J1 year 1 through 3 to be the investment amount 13,000 minus the salvage value divided by the life which is $3,000 per year. Now the book value in year 1 is going to be the initial investment um, 13,000 minus the depreciation in year 1 which is 10,000. In year 2 it's minus 2 years of depreciation which brings it down to 7,000 and in year 3 it is three years of depreciation, which is 4,000, which is also equal to the salvage value. So that's the concept of depreciation and book value. Now let's see how that works in cash flow. So we have this cash flow series, and you can see the revenue is increasing over time, and so is the cost of goods. This is probably because sales are increasing over time. Operating costs are remaining flat, which is this number, and then I've laid in depreciation to get to taxable income, then I took taxes, which is 40% of that value, to get to net income. Then I add back depreciation. So you can see cash flow is increasing um, similarly to the sales number increasing. And and one thing we want to one thing that's interesting about depreciation is that if as depreciation increases, tax um, cash flow increases. And this is because we have what's called higher tax shields, which we're shielding more of our money from taxes, so we pay less taxes. So in this is a, just an example of um, a different cash flow where we have revenue, cost of goods sold, gross margin, depreciation is a thousand here to get to taxable income and then 40% taxes, net income, add back depreciation is 3400. If, if for some reason we can take more depreciation, 4000 in this case, you can see that the cash flow has increased by um, the tax shield that's benefited it. It went from 3400 to 4600 only because depreciation has increased. So because of time value of money, it's really kind of nice to have depreciation occur sooner so that higher cash flows are sooner in the process. So you remember this example we did on the previous video where I laid out the cash flows. The depreciation in this case was 10000 you can see it here, $10,000 a year depreciation. And that resulted in a cash flow of $20,800 in every year. But what if instead of taking that $50,000 spread evenly, we actually accelerate it? And that's what's known as an accelerated depreciation. So we're going to take the same $50,000, but we're going to in, put it sort of front-loaded. So depreciation is going to be 20,000, 15, 10, 5, and 0. So if I lay that out, you can see that the depreciation is laid out here. It's a little bit differently. And also it caused cash flows in the beginning years to be higher than cash flows in the ending years. So we shifted 
cash flow forward, which is actually a good thing considering time value of money. So what I'm going to do here is show you, given this cash flow, what does that mean for the present value? And I'm just taking each one of them and discounting it back to the present value. And that means that the present value of this cash flow is 29296 which is higher from the previous video you might remember you probably don't remember but the previous video using straight line depreciation the net present value was 28,000 so we've increased the net present value by about five five hundred dollars um, which is good for cash flow I mean that's good to increase the net present value if we can take depreciation sooner so we're going to look at the various depreciation types. The one we've talked about right now is straight line, but then I have also showed you that there it's advantageous to have accelerated methods. So in the next video, we're going to go through the four accelerated methods. Um, some of yours digits, double declining balance, double declining balance, switching to straight line, and macro.